So they taught AI how to play CSGO, apparently. Uh, and you're looking at it right now. So, yo, what's up, everyone? The begins here. We are playing Counter-Strike Global Offensive that has been dreamt up in some sort of AI's nightmare realm. And I guess that we're the sleep paralysis demons because I have no idea what's going on, man. Uh, but yeah, you're, you are not looking at a game. You're not looking at something that's been, like, programmed to be a game. What you were looking at is somebody fed an AI just thousands of hours of Counter-Strike footage, and this is what it has decided that the game looks like. So if you've seen AI Minecraft, this is that, except a thousand times more terrifying and interesting. So, I don't know what kinds of realms we've ended up in right now, and I don't know how long this episode's gonna be, but we're just gonna go and uh, until, until we're done. So I'm not a Counter-Strike player. I don't know what any of the maps look like, uh, and I have no idea where we are, and I'm recording this at like midnight right now. So, whoa, we just did some sort of crazy bounce, and I just took that tree and converted it into my gun. So that's exciting. You can reset the environment by pressing enter, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's late. I, I feel kind of terrified right now. Uh, let's see, if we stare at this for a little bit, it does kind of get a little more clear. Because, I mean, ultimately, all that the AI is doing is it's picking up what it's looking at, deciding what it's seen that resembles this the most, and then, more or less, just goes with it. It just runs with it. Uh, and it's more complicated than that, of course, of course. But, like, hey, here we are. Uh, but it doesn't have, like, a world model, other than what it's been able to derive from the gameplay footage it's seen. So it doesn't actually know what shooting means. What is- was that toothpaste in my hand? Was that, like, WD-40? Like, excuse me? Why did I just get- why did I just get another gun? But if now if I hold, it does rapid fire. I think if I hit 1, 2, and 3, I get other guns. At least I thought. Where are they? What if I reload? Nothing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Gun is forming. There we go. Alright, new gun. I can twi- I can dual wield? Oh, oh, there's a guy! There's a guy! Get him! Get him! And there he goes. He's gone. <laughs> this is the weirdest experience. Oh, I got a knife. Oh, and now it's gone. Now it's a gun. Uh, this is the weirdest experience I've had in my life. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going on. And I don't even know if this is like even looks relatively decent on your end. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll AI upscale the end video, right? <laughs> oh, that would be awful. But I'm like, what I'm looking at is confusing enough to me, let alone needing to, uh, to do any kind of additional processing using artificial intelligence. So I think that when we like end up blurring the screen, that really confuses it a lot. So let's try to avoid sudden movements. I'm really enjoying my double jump. And by double jump, I mean like infinite flying jump because it can't tell that I'm not on the ground. Oh, that one that one kind of worked, but I'm stuck. And now I'm lost into the, the ether of death once again. Let's try that again. So it kind of has an idea of what the maps look like because I think that if I turn around here to the car and I look back, the bee is still going to be there. I look back, the car is still going to be there. And that's because it's learned what these maps look like. So, if you're wondering, like, well, why can't AI Minecraft do that? you, you got to remember that Minecraft... Whoa, this thing just launched me. Is a procedurally generated game, right? So, when you're playing Minecraft... Kill this guy. Uh, when you're playing Minecraft, you got to... The game is basically different every time. So it can learn the rules associated with playing Minecraft. And it can learn the general patterns that maps hold to. Uh, but the AI cannot end up creating this mental model of what just, like, every Minecraft map looks like. CSGO, on the other hand, has deterministic maps, which means they're the same every single time. So it can actually learn, using its neural network, uh, all of the ins and outs of every single map in the game as long as it's been exposed to them enough. So really, it can get a pretty decent idea of what CSGO maps look like, and uh, to my knowledge, oh, it, I didn't even reset that. Uh, the game does, or it has been trained on matches with other players. Oh, look, the, the wall just got dark when I shot it. Ain't that neat? Uh, because otherwise, I don't think it would have seen enough instances of me shooting to know what that looks like. Look at that, look at that. 
Isn't that cool? We shot the wall. There are bullet holes. Um, but yeah, effectively with Minecraft, like it can learn the rules, but with CSGO it can really learn a lot about what the individual components of the game and the maps look like. So I think that you can get to different maps in this game. Let me actually take a look and find out. All right, the answer is no, but I did learn you can crouch, so that's kind of cool. Now the crouching isn't really working. In fact, I would argue that it's not really working at all. Oh, but we're dual wielding now, that's pretty cool. Anyway, so effectively, I mean, let's get mathy here, right? Because a lot of people don't have like a full understanding of what AI is or how it works. And in the end, right, most of modern, what we might call AI and machine learning, it, it's built upon this idea of neural networks, which you've probably heard about. But there's also a theorem that states that with a sufficiently large neural network, you can actually replicate anything that has an underlying algorithm. And more or less, the neural networks are just taking examples of things that you want it to do, right? In this case, we're giving it video footage of CSGO and a bunch of like player inputs. And we're telling it like, I want you to figure out, given these inputs and given the current scene, what should the next frame look like? And, and it might be given like the previous few scenes. And so like with enough examples, it can learn pretty well uh, what a, a CSGO match typically looks like. But what's known as the uh, Universal Approximation Theorem states that given any sufficiently large neural networks and enough examples, if there is an underlying algorithm that describes what's going on in the game, it really likes taking me back here. Uh, or not even in the game, just in, in the data set that you're having it learn from, uh, that it will eventually be able to, or it has the capacity to approximate that underlying algorithm. So you could almost think of it if you think back to like, whoa, is this a guy? This is a dude, get him, get him. If you think back to like math classes or something, right? Uh, and you probably plotted stuff on a graph. That's more or less just what an AI is doing. It's just a very, very, very complex graph. And instead of being a straight line, it's a very twisty, curvy, strange line. I bet you I'm at the stairs again. Ha <laughs> ha, sure enough. And so the uh, the benefit here, though, is just that CSGO has a lot of predictable components. Like, what happens when I turn to the right? Most of the objects in my line of sight move to the left. So as a result, right? Whoa, I just accelerated up there. This is like Google Earth when you move too quickly. Uh, but as a result, because those things are predictable, it can learn the algorithm that describes what I should be seeing when I take those particular actions. So it's a really cool theorem, right? Like ChatGPT works the same way, where it's approximating the ins and outs of the English language. Just this happens to be taking, learning the ins and outs of how CSGO works, I guess. Like, this is insane. Let's see what else this map has for us. Uh, anyway, and, and a lot of AI revolves around finding the best way to encode information such that the system can learn from it. Uh, and draw some of those new patterns. Let's see if we can... Whoa, got a new gun! How much was that loot crate? I kind of want to just, like, run through a wall, but, like, I gotta find a wall first instead of these strange blobs of nothingness. Like, I'll be running, and all of a sudden, I'm just facing the sky. Still, I love the bullet holes. Like, that's probably my favorite feature. Okay, we're going through this door. Or we could just sit here and watch the ooze take over, right? Like, where? what dream world... Is this going to result in end up, uh, and, uh, and end us up in? And us ending up in, because right now this is turning into a Picasso painting. Although Picasso might be a little bit insulted by that insinuation. All right, that door has now turned into a new path available to us. I guess let's just uh, go. Hey, would you look at that? Let me, let me guess. Stairs again? No, no, that was different, that was different. Take us back. Whoa, that kicked us out. That kicked us out of dreamland. It was like, you are not hanging out in my mind. I'm gonna hang out in yours. Like, some of these things feel like the game's super liminal, right? Where you uh, look at something and then you look at it from a different angle and it changes. This is an experience, to say the least. Can we go through this wall? We totally can. So physics are optional in AI CSGO, as, as most AI games. This one really seems to crank it up to 11. Uh, here's a, a poll for you in the comments. I'm thinking I'm going to do a series of AI shorts on a bunch of Atari uh, arcade games that were trained in the same way. And as I'm sure you can imagine, uh, if AI's figured out CSGO of all games, let's try reloading. Nothing. It, does, it struggles to reload. 
Huh. Oh, but now I have like a weird looking flamethrower thing. That's cool. Uh, but like, if it does see us go this well, you can imagine it probably does a basic Atari game pretty well too. Oh, there it just reloaded. Nice. He even did like the flip thing with the gun where he like, uh, I don't know what he's doing actually. I'm not a gun guy as I've proven in other, uh, other episodes. Uh, but regardless, there's some, something about that maneuver where he clicked something over in his gun. Maybe re-racked something, who knows. But regardless. Anyway, it, let me know if you want to see a, uh, a series of me playing a few different Atari games where it's really learned how to replicate them pretty well. Like I was uh, doing some footage for a breakout session, and I guess just one of... Ay, yeah, yeah. why is it doing that? One of the patterns that it learned for some reason was that the closer you got to the top in breakout, the faster the um, the faster the ball ended up going. So I would get really close to getting it caught in that upper, whoa, we just killed a guy and got accelerated to light speed. I mean, that's cool, uh, but where is it taking us is the question. Uh, but regardless, we en uh, I ended up uh, getting it toward the top and all of a sudden the game just decided that I was like hitting a meteor ball and playing tennis with absolute devastation and death so that was a that was an interesting experience to say the least I think that we're, we're pretty close to seeing all this has to offer so we might go ahead and call this here at like a shorter episode but let me know on the AI front what you guys want to see from me or just in the gameplay in general front are there anything any other series that you would recommend uh, let me know in the comments the your your favorite game that you would like to see on the channel and there's a probably a decent likelihood that I'll play it uh, so thank you so much for watching. Make sure you let me know what you think. Is AI cool? Is it scary? Is this the greatest thing? Is this the worst thing? Give me your, your greatest expectation and your worst fear. Uh, let me know if you learned something. So pick any of those discussion topics, I guess, because now you have homework, apparently. So let's go to the end of the street, see what the game has for us, and then we'll call it for the day. Uh, whoa, I shouldn't have turned away. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>